Back in September of 2019, underneath the Trump administration, had proposed a faith ban in response to multiple reports of sickness and deaths related to e-cigarettes. New York, Massachusetts, Michigan, Rhode Island, Illinois, New Jersey, and Delaware had moved forward to push legislation to ban e-cigarettes. Companies like Juul were held responsible for starting the vaping crisis. The original cause of the lung injuries and vaping-related deaths was lipoid ammonia. Lipoid ammonia is when lipids enter the bronchioli tree, causing inflammation. The oils from the e-cigarettes are heated into a gas. The gas is then inhaled into the lungs, but the lungs are not warm enough to keep the oils in their gas state. As a result, the oils condense back into the liquid state. This leads to the bronchioles, coated in oil, are unable to expel the oils out of the lungs. People with lipid ammonia have symptoms of coughing, shortness of breath, chest pain. Treatment for lipid ammonia is respiratory therapy or anti-inflammatory medications. On November 8, 2019, the CDC came up with another possible cause of the vaping-related injuries, vitamin E acetate. Vitamin E acetate was found in the patients of vaping-related injuries. Investigators confirmed that the chemical compound found in all these samples of the liquid collected from 29 patients. The CDC Principal Deputy Director Dr. Anne Sharshut told reporters on a press call that vitamin E acetate is a known additive used to dilute liquid in e-cigarettes or vaping products that contain THC. When it is inhaled deep into the lungs, vitamin E can cause problems. The lab has found high amounts of vitamin E in 13 of the patient-submitted cartridges they've analyzed, as high as 50% of the liquid that was in vaping. Juul's most popular e-cigarette company due to the wide variety of flavors and small, sleek design. Despite that, Juul has gone through a couple controversies. An article from the New York Times details several incidents where Jill was accused of targeting teenagers, from organizing programs for high school students to giving out large grants. Lawmakers claim that Jewel built these programs to familiarize teenagers with their products, in addition to getting influencers to promote their products by making social media campaigns appealing to teenagers. Ashley Gould, a representative of Juul, rebuted the claims made by the FDA, claiming that the programs were made with the intent to promote healthy living. Gould also stated that Juul had removed all of his social media campaigns. Hi, editing here. As it turns out, Juul was accused of using their programs to gain data from, from high school students of test scores surveys, and activity logs, but since then, Ashley Gold uh, denied those claims, saying that they don't need those programs and that for the grants and programs were there to help educate young people on healthy living styles and vaping prevention as well as smoking prevention.
November 13, 2018, Kevin Burns, the former CEO of Jewel Labs, responded to the vaping crisis. Jewel Labs is committed to improving the lives of the world's 1 billion adult smokers with the ultimate goal of eliminating cigarettes. While we have been working to solve that problem, another unintended and serious problem has developed. Underage use of e-cigarettes, including Juul. We do not want anyone who does not smoke or already uses nicotine to use Juul. Juul Labs and the FDA share a common goal, preventing youth from initiating what we want to be the off-ramp for adult smokers. To switch from cigarettes, not an on-ramp for America's youth to initiate onto nicotine. Our intent was to never have youth use Juul products, but intent is not enough. The numbers are what matter, and the numbers tell us underage use of e-cigarette products is a problem. We must solve it. The e-cigarettes causing the deaths are a form of illegal e-cigarettes or e-joints. It is illegal to sell any nicotine products, including e-cigarettes, to anyone under the age of 18. So who slash where is providing these supp illegal supplies? They're the ones that should be held responsible, not Juul. Teenagers saw vaping as a trend, as a result gained popularity. It's hard to miss the big vape clouds outside this East Vancouver school. It's a daily occurrence during lunch break. Students as young as 15 taking part. It's the flavor, it's the head rush, it's the social factor of it. A study conducted by the New England Journal of Medicine showed out of 900 participants, among those assigned to vaping, 18% had stopped smoking while 10% of those still use nicotine replacement therapy had quit. Among successful quitters, 80% of those in the e-cigarette group were still vaping. Only 9% of those in the nicotine replacement group were still using those products. Reports of cough and phlegm production dropped more in the e-cigarette group. E-cigarettes were more effective for smoking sensation than nicotine replacement therapy such as long-acting nicotine patch or short-acting nicotine gum, when both products are accompanied by behavioral support or counseling. However, the e-cigarettes used in this study contain much more lower levels of nicotine than found in some common brands in the U.S., such as Juul. Thrust is uncertain at this time if higher nicotine levels could contribute to a higher rate of addiction to the e-cigarette. On December 17, 2019, a new study published by Portland State University concluded that Juul pods are just as addictive to Marvolo cigarettes. Juul Labs is able to take nicotine salt and add organic acids, just like benzenic acid, to liquid nicotine. This makes the nicotine easier to absorb and has a more pleasant taste without gagging, coughing, nor wheezing. Juul virtually eliminate the harsh side effects. However, nicotine salts have a higher concentration of nicotine than free-based nicotine. This can explain why Juul has a high nicotine concentration. The traditional cigarette contains about an average of 10 to 12 milligrams of nicotine. However, you will only inhale about 1.1 to 1.8 milligrams of nicotine by the end of each cigarette. This means that for each pack of 20 cigarettes, you will most likely inhale 22 to 30 milligrams of nicotine. And one 5% Juul nicotine pod is equal to one pack of cigarettes. This study did not determine how much nicotine is inhaled from a single Juul pod.
This feels like the FDA is trying to find a way to make Juul a scapegoat for the vaping crisis. Most likely, Juul will pay a fine and the government will find a way to tax e-cigarettes. Don't get me wrong, I do think there is a legitimate concern over a young generation choosing to vape, but not because of flavors, but due to seeing Juul as a trend. I personally cannot find myself blaming the entire vaping crisis on Juul. Not saying Juul has done anything wrong. It is clear that the e-cigarette company failed when it came to its advertisement. Instead of focusing on helping smokers quit, Juul unintentionally became appealing to teenagers with their use of bright colors and getting huge influencers to promote their products. Yet in response to the vaping crisis, Juul has increased their age limit to purchase a vape starter kit from 18 to 21. They stopped their social media campaign. Even the CEO has stepped down in response to the backlash. Juul is now promoting Switch. Switch is a new slogan of switching from traditional cigarettes to e-cigarettes. To be honest, Juul should have went this route in the beginning. Now they are featuring former smokers that give their testimony on how Juul helped them quit smoking.